the nation's favourite antiques experts. I just love it. Behind the wheel of a classic car. It's fast. It's a race. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Could be tricky. 38. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. High five. There will be worthy winners. Mind blowing. And valiant <laughs> losers. Could have been worse. Will it be the high road to glory? <laughs> or the slow road to disaster? Oh no. This <laughs> is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> beep beep. The sun has got his hat on. Time to hit the trail. But our coin expert Tim Medhurst and jewellery specialist Christina Trevanian are still without a sense of direction between them. Dearie me, where will we finish up? Uh, north is that way. <laughs> Which way is it? Are we actually, is it sort uh, of that well, way? Well, due north must be, um, I'd say that way. That way? Yeah. Okay. Well, is the cows po are pointing that way. Well, judging by the cows, then we're currently in Dorset. Having begun this trip in Emsworth, they're touring the country lanes of the south-west before a final auction in Wales. Tim and Christina have become quite acquainted, possibly too well acquainted. You've been chewing your nails again, haven't yep. you? Would you say that you are a clumsy person? I don't know. I have been told that before, but I think I'm a bit more... I'm just not aware of my surroundings, perhaps. <laughs> I'm all in my own little bubble. All your limbs. Tim's world. Yeah. <laughs> in Tim's world, despite some success at auction, the £200 he began with has dwindled to a new total of £151.40. Christina's world is altogether wealthier, and despite a small loss last time, her piggy is stuffed with £602.54p. You started this whole road trip by telling me, I'm going to win. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to win. Christina, there's still time. There is the still ground. time for oh, this. Oh, OK, good, I like the that. The game is still on. Once more, into the breach. Ah, oh, morning. Oh, look, he's having a wave. Morning. Oh, I love it around here. I love people around here. They're so friendly. This time, the 1979 MG Midget will be tootling through Dorset and Hampshire before auction in Stroud in the Cotswolds. And the first stop today is Sherburne. One-time capital of the Kingdom of Wessex and the town's ancient abbey contains 9th-century Saxon tombs said to belong to Alfred the Great's two brothers. With the king's ransom in her pocket, Christina is bound for Ackerman Street Antique Centre. Oh, look, I can get out today. Well that done. That's quite elegantly done, wasn't it, for a change? Super, have a lovely day. Thank you, you See too. See you later. Bye. Hello, 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 hello. Oh, Looking hello. very industrious, both oh, of you, yes. behind this cabinet here. <laughs> Christina, lovely to Alistair. meet you. Alistair. Hi, and I'm Jill. Jill, Hi. lovely to meet you both. Give us a shout if there's anything you need any help with. Brilliant. Will do. Thank you very okay. much. All kinds of everything here. There is so much to see. I'm going to have to get my skates on, I think. Oh, that's nice. No, Christina, come on. Don't get sidetracked. Come on. Time to focus. This is great. Look, builder, E.A. Dodd, contractor. It's obviously a wrought iron tradesman. He would have gone on the side of his building. £110. That's quite cool, though, isn't it? It's quite a lot of money, but nonetheless, I like that very much. And what else do you like? So my eye has just been drawn to this. This looks unusual. It's a travelling... Cruet, basically. It's plated, so you've got mustard, salt, pepper and cayenne, and it's even got its little spoon in there. Has it? That's great. I've never seen one no, of these I've before. I've never seen one in a plate like that. So what's that? That's... It's got a spoon in it. Yeah. Oh, brilliant! If you were Lord and Lady Doodah and you Absolutely. decided, yeah. Jeeves, make yes. us a picnic one day, yeah. bring the, bring the travelling cruet... Bring that with you. <laughs> Maybe I could use this for me and Tim, travelling around with having our packed lunches. <laughs> How much have you got on that, Jill? Uh, one, four, five on that one. Oh, does it? Okay. That's fun, though. While our well-seasoned <laughs> expert considers that possibility, let's find out how Tim's getting on. 
He's a dab hand behind the wheel of that car now and is travelling east to Sturminster Newton, where he's beginning his day's antiques trawling at Oakland Collectibles. Hello. Hi there. Hi, I'm Tim. Pleased to meet you, Tim. Jason. Nice to meet you. And this you. looks fantastic. Thank you very much. Some yeah. amazing things here. Thank Looking you. forward to having a look around. Yeah, please do. This interesting shop specialises in French vintage collectibles. Aimez-vous quelque chose, team? Garçon stupide. I love helmets, and this one is really cool. This is an early 20th century French fire helmet. Dates to around the Great War, First World War, and it's got a real decorative look about it, and I love it. Um, what's the price on this one? And it's sold. What a shame, I love it. That's what I would have gone for. But there we are, you can't have everything. Nope, you can't. But while you look for something else, what's the story back in Sherburn? Oh, a box! Can I rummage? Absolutely. Ooh. So these have just literally just come in? Yeah. Just tell me about that crib, because that's uh, rather That lovely. came from the same place. As a mummy, I love cribs yeah. like that. It's really charming. Let's bring it forward, because it's really lovely. That is yeah. charming. And it's a nice pale wood as yeah. well. What is it, pine? It's pine, so pitch pine. Oh, I can gorgeous. do you forty-five pounds, but that's absolutely the best price. Forty-five pounds. So, yeah. yeah well, be I'll upset if you don't make no. a profit on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll have that for forty-five. One down. Okay, Let's okay. have a rummage through here. What on earth is that? Looks like a puppet to me. So he's got a little pottery head yeah. that somebody's painted. And then he's been built out of old tea tins or something, Actually, hasn't I he? I hadn't noticed that. Yeah, look, there's yeah. some sort of oh, that's amazing. advertising yeah. tin. So somebody has gone to the trouble of making this guy. OK, what's the, what's the okay, price? This one I could do for 25 OK, so 45 25 40 50 60 70 pounds. Yeah. Would, could we say 60 for the two? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> Just because I do like a bit of a bargain. <laughs> right, that has to be 45. Okay. I would do 20 on. So 40, 45, 55, 65? Yes. I'm happy about that. Okay, just. thank you. Into battle we go! Oh, yes. To Medhurst. <laughs> well, while Christina carts that crib away, has Tenacious Tim found himself any French fancies yet? Ooh la la. This is interesting. So, in the 19th century, this would have been a page from a fashion magazine. And what I love about this one is that it's been embellished and the ladies have been given lovely clothes. And look, somebody's handmade all of these lovely dresses and attached it to them. And it's dated down the bottom, 1872. So we're going on for 150 years ago. For somebody that collects 19th century memorabilia or sort of Victorian period interiors would really like that. I think at auction this might have a little bit of potential. So let's see what Jason thinks. I'm gonna ask him how much it is. Oh, yeah, found something. Yeah, I found a charming little picture. Yeah, isn't lovely, it isn't nice? it? Mm. Yeah. I've got a price ticket here on it. Yep. £25. Yep. What's your real best price? 15 <laughs> 15 I'm shaking your hand. That's Good really deal. generous, thank you. Yeah. C'est magnifique. Très bon, mon petit chou. Au revoir. Oh, really pleased with that. Great start. Oh, oh no. Oof. Wet bum. Joy of the convertible. It's definitely a bit wet. On your way, soggy bottom boy. Christina's taking a ride five miles east now to Child Oakford in the Dorset countryside. Once upon a time, horses were part of everyday life, essential for transport, farming and industry and war. Every village had a smithy where horses were shod and Smith is still the most common surname in the UK and the US. <laughs> Today, horses are mainly for sport and pleasure, but they still need their shoes. To see how it's done, Christina's visiting Abby Bunyard, a farrier with 20 years' experience. Hello. This sounds like a hub of activity, my goodness. Hello. Hey, hi. You must be Abby. I am. Lovely. I am. Abby. Welcome I'm to Talk I'm Pit. sorry, am I interrupting? No, no, not at all. I love a shoe. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's not my like usual shoes. kind of shoe. Yeah, I, do. I like other shoes as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those are huge ones. Yeah, they're um, original draft horse oh, shoes. Wow, they're massive. Um, 
So these basically acted as a cushion on the horse's feet. Protection. So without the shoe, a horse would really struggle to go about its daily business because really the, the surfaces that we put horses on now are not natural to them. They're not they? natural. So therefore, to keep them safe and sound in the jobs that we are asking them to do, we've got to protect the underlying structures. And without the shoes? they would be lame, they would be sore. We're trying to allow these horses to, um, to perform their duties to the best of their ability for the duration of their working life. Roman cavalry used metal strap-on shoes known as hippo sandals for their horses, but the nailed-on horseshoe as we know it today emerged in the Dark Ages. So since 900 AD, we've been using the same nail-on steel shoes. Yeah. So it's an incredibly historic process. Yeah, hugely historic. Abbey is the modern face of a craft unchanged in a thousand years. Horses need new shoes about every six weeks, and it's time to check the hooves of Abbey's own horse, Bentley. Hello, Bentley. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You are gorgeous. So has he got shoes on now? Doesn't no. look like he has. No. No. Gosh, he's clearly very used to uh, picking his feet up. Yeah, he is. What's the hoof actually made of? Keratin. OK, all knotted together yeah. to create that wonderful yeah. sort of hard substance. Yeah. So clearly, old Bentley boy, you need a new pair of shoes. Hey? Should we go and make him some? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we can go and make him some. Can, can I watch? Yeah, Oof. yeah, you can have a go. Crikey, time to turn up the heat. What we're going to do with that. Just kick me out of the way if That's I'm That's all right. Way. We're going to pop a toe bend in that. It's really malleable, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Abby, how long does it take to make a set of four horseshoes from scratch? So, eight minutes a shoe? Eight minutes at all? At gas mark five. <laughs> Abby's going to let Christina have a bash at making the nail holes at the right angle for specially shaped horseshoe nails. Quick as you can. OK. Yeah. So it's Think hot. of the angle. Yeah. Sloping. Sloping, Go medium, upright. Yeah. So sloping. Yep. Just give it a good whack. Go on. Yep. Yep. And then... Medium. Medium That's like it. that. So. Oh, I okay. came oh. off. <laughs> Try again. Ready? Yeah. That's it. Well done. Oh, my goodness. Turn it over. That's your nail holes. Do those? You did. Oh, you Copy did. Those. You got any apprenticeships going? Yeah. I make the tea. Oh, do you? Yeah. I'll be good at the tea. <laughs> Once the horse is ready, the shoes are heated again before final alterations and fitting. It's not the fact that you're putting it on hot, it's the fact that it's easier to shape the shoe. Right. If you look, we shaped that earlier and it fits an absolute oh, treat. And you can see the foot is level. Hammer? Yeah. Nails. How about nails? These have not changed for thousands no. of years. I mean, this is such a sort of... They made a really good product. They really did. Then. Yeah, and no, it they just, did. It's phenomenal that it just hasn't changed. No, 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 hasn't and changed. And is it still the best way? Is it yes. still the only way? Yes. Amazing. It is the best way. They just knew that what they were doing, didn't they? And uh, do they have a file now? Yeah. Gosh, how neat. Bentley, wow. look at your new feet. They're Jimmy Choo's. Is that a spare horse? That is a spare horse. So I might give this to Tim and try yeah. and give him some luck. Yeah, I would. On our next end Your of our next journey. Hunt. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Okay. Thank so, you. Take, take care. care. Bye. And Tim needs all the luck he can get, with four hundred and fifty pounds less than Christina to spend. <laughs> He's on his way to Litchit Minster near Poole on the south coast. You know, well, it's not much worse than having a soggy bum in a car, is there? I don't know. <laughs> I can think of a few things. Next stop is the charmingly named Old Button Shop. And it oh, looks dear. like rain again. Oh, not falling for this again. Oh. Heave ho! Oh, there we are. That should do the job. Quick! Inside, time to meet owner Thelma and her friend, Victoria. A bit wet up there. Hello. Hello. Tim. How are you? I'm well, thank I'm you. I'm Tim. How are you? I'm very well. It's very nice to see you. Yes. What an amazing <laughs> shop. How long have you been here? I've been here 48 years. Wow, so that's awesome. amazing. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's definitely an Aladdin's cave, isn't it? It is, rather, isn't it? I'm yes. like a kid in a sweet shop now. Make mine a quarter of humbugs, eh? You can only afford the penny tray, Tim. 
The um, rocking horse outside. Yes. What's your it's, price on that? It's 120. Right. Okay. It's not really a rocking horse at all. Oh. It's come from a uh, merry-go-round about 1900. Oh, well. Dobbin is a fine GG, but he's expensive. Keep looking. So this is a lovely leather case, isn't it? It is. Rather. And it's got lovely gilt embossed yes, fleur de lis. Yeah. yeah. And on, on here, I noticed a maker's mark. W and J Milne Limited, makers to the late Queen, Edinburgh. Yes, yeah. Now, the late Queen might be Queen Mary, George V's wife. It's beautiful mm. leather. Well, look, it needs some TLC, doesn't yes. it? But don't we all, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a little bit of damage here, haven't we? Yes, that's but right. Let's yeah. not talk it down too much, because it is a no, smart thing. Really what, nice. what price are you asking on it? I'll not. be very kind to you and say... Twelve pounds. Twelve pounds. Thank you. I love that. Done. So that's a deal. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Anything else? Thelma. Ah. Can you tempt yes. me with this? Uh, <laughs> I would think so. Isn't that it's charming? very interesting. It is, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. So it's a Mary Phipson and Parker's letter clip. Yes. And it's got a registration number here and mark October the third, eighteen forty-three. Stamps yeah. came out in 1840. That's, That's when they right. started, wasn't yes. it? So yes. this could be one of the earliest letter clips designed it's for good. stamped post. How exciting. Let's say that. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> so what we got? Oh, price ticket. I don't I can't remember. £25 you've got on that. Yeah, £25. That's tempting, pounds. isn't it? But the temptations just keep coming. Thelma, I'm having a mad moment. Ah. <laughs> Do you know what? It, it was the first thing I saw as I was running up to yes, the shop in the pouring yes, rain. Yeah. And I just feel really bad to leave him there. I love all of the early leather and all yes. the bridle yes. and it's got yes. all the early bits that you would want on yes, it. Yes, it has, yes. I think it's fantastic. Yes. So I was thinking... Could we do a, a really interesting deal on the letter clip... Here we go. ..and the rocking horse? <laughs> How about 130? You can't do a hundred quid for the two, can you? Hundred for the two. For the two. Mm. Make it hundred and ten. Hundred and ten. Tell you what, can we meet in the middle at one o five for the two? Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I love them. <laughs> Thank you. One hundred and seventeen pounds to Thelma for the three. Twelve for the case. Twenty for the letter clip, and eighty-five for Dobbin. And Tim's budget has just slipped below twenty pounds. Well. He still looks pleased with himself. I know there are some rolling hills, but it seems a bit flat for Dorset. I expect more dinosaurs. Mm. You know, a bit more Jurassic Coast. More Jurassic Coast, yeah. yeah. I sort of feel we're still in Somerset, maybe. We could be. Or Devon. Or Devon. <laughs> <laughs> or Siberia. <laughs> well, wherever they are, we'll find them again tomorrow. So, nighty night. It's a new day in the New Forest and Christina and Tim are encountering the locals. Hi, the ponies! Hello. Oh, look! Hello. Why the long Good face? Good morning. Why are you in there now? Hi, ponies! Hello, ponies. Hello. See, that is a classic New Forest breed. Oh, this one, is it? Oh, he's tiny. Hi, Dinky Doo! <laughs> <laughs> Whee! Oh. <laughs> I think he's a bit lost. I think that's he a was. Shetland. <laughs> They're all over the place. Hi, pony! Why are they all over the road and the... Well, that's just sort of what happens around here. I mean, they're new forest ponies. That's what they're allowed to do. Yeah. Oh, yesterday, Christina fell for a tin puppet. Because I do like a bit of a bargain. And a Victorian pine crib, leaving her a not inconsiderable £537.54 pence to spend. While Tim took a fancy to a rocking horse. I think it's fantastic. A leather case, a Victorian left clip, and a French fashion print, leaving him a meagre 19 pounds and 40p. I am not enjoying this weather this morning. Well, you should oh. have seen yesterday when I plonked myself down in the car yeah. and soaked my bum. Oh, no! <laughs> it was the most uncomfortable thing, a leather seat with a wet bum. Oh, that would chafe a bit, wouldn't it? Itchy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Too much information. <laughs> Too much information, Timothy. Moving swiftly on, then. After dropping off Tim, Christina's first destination this morning is Lindhurst in Hampshire, a village known as the capital of the New Forest. 
Who knows what might be hidden away in her first emporium, the lovely Lindhurst Antique Centre. More than 45 dealers sell their antiques here, so loads to see. Lots of shiny things for Christina. This is fabulous, isn't it? 15.89, sixpence. 15.89. It's nearly 500 years old and only 70 pounds. It really is fabulous. And of course, you have to think that at this time, most of the population were pretty much illiterate. They couldn't read, particularly couldn't write. And so this was one of the biggest forms of propaganda you had. This is sometimes the only way that people would see what their monarch looked like. So this had to be a symbol of power. This had to be a portrait of a strong and influential monarch. And this one, this 1821 crown, this is a portrait of George IV. And he looks like you know, a Roman god. He looks like somebody that you would want to sort of follow and lead you into battle. It's quite astonishing. Look at him. Look at him. Christina, put the coins down. You're turning into Tim Medhurst. <laughs> no beard, though. Away with you. Time for a chat with owner Jason. Is there anything hidden away? Is there any kind of really fresh stock that hasn't gone out yet? Have you got anything at all? Uh, there is a box of dusty pots that you might want to have a look at. I but, love a dusty uh, pot. You know, with spiders as well. Bring it on, Jason. OK, so these, oh, these are quite, quite stylish things. Well, Very it's signed. 60s, 70s, I would say, and they're actually signed as well. So studio pottery, I think you would um, describe those as. <laughs> You weren't yeah, joking, were you? What's that? Incy's mum. Oh, yeah, no, dad, I wasn't joking. It's brother definitely. And sister. Wincy's spine is definitely in. <laughs> departed life in there. Yeah, I think, I think they're asleep. Yeah, they're just sleeping. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so, quite so these, cool. These look really nice, and um, we've got a lovely group. So that's signed by somebody, which is quite lovely. That's not signed, but. So these, these are really pretty. Interesting. Oh, they're beautiful. They're really beautiful. Oh, and these are by the same guy. Dated 1965 and 66, the pots are by René Morel, who made studio pottery at Tourette sur Loup in Provence. So what are we talking for the group, Jason? I think £40, 40 pounds for the group would be a fair price. It's a nice little lot. Yeah. And um, they're signed... I'd be happy to give you 30 should we shake hands, Christina? I don't know, shall we? At, at what price? Shall we? No, I don't know. 30, I said. <laughs> Does that include Incy, Wincy, and Mum, Dad and he's Brother? Free. He's free. <laughs> you are a gentleman. 30, 30, 30 pounds. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much. Certainly is. She's being very canny with her wads of cash, isn't she? After all those hundreds she spent last time. Right, she's off. Cheerio! Cheerio! Meanwhile, Tim's wending south through the New Forest to the Georgian hamlet of Buckler's Hard, which, though a sleepy backwater today, was once a thriving shipyard making huge wooden warships for the British naval fleet. It was originally named Montague Town after the second Duke of Montague. Tim's taking shelter from the rain in the museum where he's meeting one of the Duke's descendants, Mary Montague Scott. Hi. Hello. I'm Tim. Hello, I'm Mary. Oh. I'm the director of the museum here. Welcome to Buckler's Hard. Thank you. Great to see you. I'm Going to show you around? It. Yes, thank you. My family have owned this estate here at Bewley, including the Bewley River, since 1538. And so it then started to become a shipbuilding centre from about the 1720s when my ancestor, John Duke of Montague, built the village. The entrepreneurial Duke's original plans were for a large port capitalising on the sugar trade with the West Indies. The wide main street was designed for transporting that cargo, but the Duke was late to the race for sugar and missed the boat. Huh. And instead, he leased what was renamed Buckler's Hard to some shipwrights. Here we have a model showing what the village looked like in 1803. We know that the shipwright went to Wales to even buy wow. trees to bring them back here, and they would have come in by boat and then be sawn up in the uh, saw pits here at Buckler's mm. Hard. In the old days, of course, you would have up to 200 workers working on the shipyard. It was wow. a big, noisy, mm. industrial site. But nowadays, it's a rather sleepy, beautiful village. Mm. For a 100 years, orders from the Admiralty ensured that large warships towered over the five launchways at Buckler's Hard, and some very famous ships indeed were built here. 
So here we have the story of the ships that fought at the Battle of Trafalgar, in particular HMS Agamemnon, which was Nelson's favourite ship, and we have a big connection, built at Buckless Hard in 1781. There was a gale mm -hmm. after the Battle of Trafalgar, and many ships were damaged very severely in the gale after the battle, mm -hmm. not many people know that. You can almost feel that ship creaking, you can't can. you? And how frightening would have been if you were in one of these little ships, or maybe you'd fallen overboard or been injured, you see ships sinking here in the background. An amazing thing. It is. And we've got some beautiful things owned by Nelson, a piece of his hair, a mourning ring of Lady Hamilton, and a miniature of Nelson, a very rare one because he's shown in civilian dress, and apparently it's the only one in the world. Time then to say goodbye to Mary and head out into the sunshine and see the village and meet a man who's busy keeping some of those old shipbuilding traditions alive, John Adams. I'm crafting a piece of wood to fit in between two major timbers of a ship's hull. So this would really be a bracing piece between a ship's frame and a string or something like that. Yeah. This is a tool which really produces a fine adjustment to make sure that timbers fit snugly up against one another. Maybe it's the archetypal ship's tool of a yeah. post-medieval shipyard. Time for Tim to have a bash, or should I say chip. If you bring your leg a little bit closer and then brace that hand yeah, against your my side, leg. Okay. that'll help stabilise the haft. Not bad at all. There we are. My father was a carpenter. <laughs> My youngest brother is a French polisher and furniture Well, there you go. It's in the blood. It's, it's in the blood. <laughs> the next stage yep. towards professionalism is just, just let the blade fall. And tap it. And then you can hear that rhythmic sort of chuck yeah. sound as the blade's working. It's quite therapeutic, it's, isn't it? It's fantastic. You can do this for hours. Have another go. We'll leave Tim a while longer, harking back to the glory days of 18th century Buckler's Hard, and follow Christina, who's making her way south. She thinks. Do, 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 do. Nice day for it. Love cyclists. Of course, I bicycle. Can we could have an antiques bicycle trip. That would be quite fun, wouldn't it? Better you than me, dearie. Christine is en route to Southampton now to the last shop of the day, where Tim will be joining her later at Robin's Nest Emporium. Oh, this is huge. See you, Mitch. Hello! Hello! The warehouse has acres of stalls belonging to different dealers. Time to get hunting. Oh, this looks like quite an interesting stall, doesn't it? Look at this. So that, so hang on a second, let's look at the price first. What have we got there? £50. Commode cabinet. Isn't that ridiculous? Fifty pounds. This is a piece of George the Third furniture, mahogany. It's seventeen sixty to eighteen twenty. For goodness' sakes, I shall enlighten you. As if you were a Georgian lady or gentleman, and you, um, <clears throat> should we say, nature called in the middle of the night, then this would house your thunderpot. So you would get out of bed, and you would have your potty in there, and you would clearly do your whatever you needed to do, and then in it would go again. You know. It's basically for a number one and a number two. It is the equivalent of a Georgian en suite. It's rather nice. It's only one to have a think about. Well, there you go then. Our man Tim, though, has arrived and is prowling the many aisles. <coughs> Oops. No embouchure, I'm assured. Might try a commode. This is huge. They could put another floor in there and then there'd be double the amount but there's a lot to look through here. Need help? Try dialing a friend. Tim, I hope you're not finding any bargains. Hmm. He's flat out. Oh, I'm struggling. Tim? Yes? Are you OK? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just gave up for a minute. Did you go flat? Yeah. Why? I can't lie, I'm struggling in here. How much have you got to spend? £19.40. Ah, OK. Um... How much have you got to spend? £784. <laughs> Perhaps some teamwork is required. Who's got the key to the cabinet then, Carol? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite like this shopping together. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I don't like it when you're sort of beetling around by yourself. I'm quite enjoying sort of thinking about spending your money, really. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm, glad. I'm glad you are. Mm. That's quite cute. That looks Scottish, doesn't it? Silver. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I'm blind. Can you see what... They're tiny. Can you see that? 
with your young eyes. Let me just go cross-eyed. <laughs> That's an attractive look. <laughs> I can't. That, um, it's it is look. fairly modern. It's probably 80s. Mm. It's quite funky though, isn't it? Yeah. It is in fact by Norman Grant, a Scottish jeweller whose work in the 60s and 70s was worn by stars like Elton John and Sandy Shaw. Nice. I'm going to go and buy some antiques. Okay. I'll see you later. Enjoy, have fun. I quite like that, Carol. Right, Carol. I need Carol. Carol is much in demand with the keys. I'm looking at a piece of military history. This badge here, carved in the top of this box, is the badge of the Army Service Corps. Now, the Army Service Corps are unsung heroes of the First World War. They supplied the British troops with all the supplies they needed. I just really like it. I think in auction, you've got a couple of collectors, you've got treen collectors, you've got military collectors, and I think probably 30 to 50 pounds, something like that. What's the price? We've got 22 pounds. And this is where we talk to Carol about price. Okay. <laughs> Carol, now, I have got 19 pounds and 40 pence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think that would buy this box? Yeah, I'm sure that would be Fantastic, fine. thank you. Let's shake your hand. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. All helpful. of it, All every of it. single penny. All there we are. Every last penny. That's me done. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yes, he is completely cleaned out. Right, Carol, time to get some cash out of Miss Moneypenny here. The other thing I saw was this. It's a night commode or nightstand commode, right. table-y sort of tray top, Georgian piece of furniture. It's rather lovely. The commode and the brooch both belong to the same dealer, so Carol needs to give him a ring. How is it? Almost like it's the tension, isn't it? Ooh. Hi, it's Carol at Robin's Nest. I've got the lovely Christina with me, and she's interested in a couple of pieces on your store. A Scottish silver brooch, and it's priced at £25, and the Georgian commode, that's priced at 50 and we're looking for a good price, because <laughs> she's obviously got to take them to auction. 60 60 That sounds very reasonable, if that's OK. OK, that's lovely then, we'll do that. Oh, tell him thank you very much. She said thank you thank very much. You. Thank you, nice dealer man. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> yep, 60. 40 for the commode, cheap. 20 for the brooch, cheap. And their work here is done. Oh, oh dear. Have I broken it? You. <laughs> there we go. Thank Off we go, ready? Beep, beep. Whee! Until auction made the valve after some shut-eye. Good morning, Stroud. Yes, Tim and Christina have made their way to the western fringes of the lovely Cotswolds today and are bound for Stroud auction rooms. Oh, no. I forgot my lucky brooch. Uh, this is going gonna... to be a proper disaster. It's going to be a bloodbath. Oh, bath. no. Ah, well, hold your horses. Hang on a minute, look. Now, close your eyes. OK. Open your hands. What's going on? Two hands. Two hands? Two hands, yeah. You ready? Ah! Okay. <laughs> As luck would have it. So I can wear this now. This is my new lucky brooch. <laughs> oh, it does, it does work. It's got a bit of soil in it still. That's fine. I hope it's I'm going to make loads of money now. Yeah, you are. Go on, let's get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the going certainly looks good. Aye, aye. <laughs> Our lady of much bounty parted with but 155 of her pounds on five lots. Do you collect coins? Oh, you do? That's good. Sometimes antiques do actually talk to you. What has Christina bought here? Well, he looks like a little puppet. Not entirely sure about that one. I kind of like it. It's sort of charming, and he's a coin collector. He's in a toy sale, so he'll probably do all right. While our Jack the Lad gambled every last penny of his £151 and 40p on his five lots. Actually, this is my favourite of Tim's purchases. I just think there is something about this little guy. His expression on his face is so charming. Sometimes you see them and they're a little bit sort of... But he's just gorgeous and it's got a great pattern to it. I think it might be racing into profit. Rather fine lots on this trip, I'd say. What does our auctioneer, Stuart Moore, have to say? The letter clip, well, this is a great thing because you're not buying the letter clip as such you're buying the history behind it. Imagine the letters that have been clipped into that letter clip. Great, interesting thing, and a great talking point to have on anyone's desk. The brooch is probably the best item in terms of the items bought. 
Jewellery is one of our strongest areas and it's always very popular and it's by a very well-renowned maker. So it should get up to £100. On a good day, could be a couple of hundred. Well, the are starters, Alderson. Time to take your places, please. There will be bidding in the room and online. It's six so exciting. So I'm going to hold this tightly. And first to the catwalk, Tim's embellished print of fashionable French ladies. I can start the bidding at £30. £30 pounds starts the bidding. Double money two. already. £30, £32, £35 going. still with me. 35, 38, and 40. Yes, it works, it works. 42, 45. Go in, get going. 45, go. 48, and my commission bid is out at 48. Fantastic. 48 pounds. Oh, that's amazing. 48 pounds, and if we're all done at 48 pounds. Sold. Yay. <laughs> what a great result. C'est formidable. Beaucoup de monnaie. Finally. At last. Finally. <laughs> I'm getting some money. <laughs> Thank you. OK, that was your first lot. Christina's first lot now, the sword-fighting tin marionette. En garde. £60 starts the bin. Do I see five anywhere? 65 and 70 still with me. Oh, Bob. It's this. £75 oh, and 80 it? still with me. We, we, we are, are taking this five. everywhere. £80 and 90 is with me. At £90. At £90, £95. £100 with me. At £100. £110. £110. And the bids from £100. This is silly. There's only Bob. <laughs> People are loving Bob. Yeah. We're all sure at £110. Well done. Taxi to Trevanyan <laughs> to the Seychelles. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Bob. He was indeed worth a bob or two. Yeah, okay, I'm keeping this now. <laughs> I want it back. <laughs> Next up is Tim's embossed leather case. £30 starts the bidding. 30, 32. Ooh, at 32, on. do I see five? Yes. At 32 We've got bidders. Pounds on the net. 32, 35. 35. Yes. At 35, it's on the phone. At 35 pounds, we're all done. To the telephone oh, no, at 35 no, no, no. pounds. I'm pleased. Well, well, Tripling your money. There. Yes. His luck is in almost a three times return there. This came from a horse called Bentley. Oh, it was once a set of four, then. It, well, yes. Would you want me to go back and get the other three? <laughs> Under the hammer now, Christina's 1960s René Morel pottery. £50 starts the bidding. Do I see five? At 55. Oh, Internet 55. 65. 70 still with me. 70. 75 and 80 still on commission with me. 85 and my commission well bid is out. At 85 pounds, and we're selling to net at 85 pounds. If we're all sure and all done at 85 pounds. I'm a little disappointed if I'm honest. What? Nearly tripling your cash seems good to me. Bye bye. <laughs> Maybe the horseshoe is going to their heads. Now it's time for Tim's Victorian letter clip, stamped 1843. 40 pounds starts the bidding. 40 pounds, do I see two anywhere? 42. 42. Got the internet. 45 is still on commission with me. 48 and 50 Keep is still going. With me. Come on. 50 pounds, 55. Maybe my millions. Is still with me. Seriously, we are on fire today. Look at the flames coming off your shoes. 75 and my commission bid is out at 75 pounds. The bid's on the net. <laughs> 75 oh, pounds. Nice. That's really nice. good. 75 pounds. Fantastic. Well done. Brilliant. Another fine profit. There's no stopping him today. Well done, Timbo. All credit to you, darling. Come on. Yeah. You bought it. You spotted it. Oh. It's marvellous. Up next is Christina's 19th century pine crib. Will it rock? 50 pounds do I see five? 55 and 60. Nearly Excellent. out of trouble, I think. 60 pounds. 65. Now I'm out of trouble. <laughs> 70 pounds is on commission looking for five. That's At 70 pounds, it? then it's on commission with me. It's fairly 70. 70. I hope nobody's asked for a condition report. Okay, it doesn't really rock very much. <laughs> the wood worm. That's its unique selling point. Sure. It's the cradle that doesn't rock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well done. Happy days. Not bad. Yeah. So, 25 pounds put to bed. God, they just keep on coming, don't they? It's amazing. Tim's World War I carved ASC box. Keep up the lucky streak. £30 starts the bidding. £30 looking for two. At 32, 35's with me. 35, That's do I see eight? Look at the at 35 great. 38 and 40 oh, still with oh, me. Still going. At £40 is still on commission with me then. At £40 it's on commission with me if we're all short. At £40. Oh, pounds. £40. Pounds. Double the money, Doubled up. They are raking in the profits today. Great. £6. Well done. Thank you. Ah, pinch your noses. 
It's time for Christina's George III mahogany commode. Oh, this is where it all goes horribly wrong. This is it where all the profit goes down the toilet? <laughs> but 30 pounds it's on commission, 32, oh, it's 35, make 35, 38, oh, Bedley, Bedley. 40 pounds is still with me, looking for two. Oh, come on, 40 keep pounds going. Bid, 40 pounds, 42, 45 with me. 45, do I see eight? 48. 45, looking for eight. Oh, 45 pounds then. Are you out of trouble with that? With no, me. I think so. Five. No. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, what a shame. It's a disaster. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but it will be a net loss after commission is deducted. Georgian furniture handmade, for completely pounds. handmade. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. Next up, will Tim's rocking horse be a front runner? One hundred pounds starts the bidding. At one hundred pounds, looking for one ten. Oh, one ten. Got bids. One twenties with me. One twenty. One thirty. One forty. Come on! 50. Come on! 150, looking for 160. At 150 pounds, it's on commission with Come me. Come on, all short. keep going. 170. Yes. 170. 180 is on the net. Come on, Bentley, keep it going. Come on, hit that 200. 190, looking for 200. 200. 200. Hit the 200. At 200, do I see 220? At 220 now. 220, looking for 240. Oh, Come on, God, one more. Keep going, keep 220 going. pounds. <laughs> 220 pounds if you're all sure on the net. Add 220 pounds. Sold. You little Fantastic. superstar. Yes. Well done. Oh, thank you for this today. Oh, Appreciate well, that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm slightly regretting giving it to you now, to be honest. Don't blame you. Tim's lucked out with Dobbin and he's made money on every one of his lots today, so well done. Oh, you're galloping now, <laughs> Timothy. You're galloping <laughs> now. Christina's last lot now is the Norman Grant silver and enamel brooch. Will it shine? Oh, look, there's a murmuring in the sound. I've got interest straight in at £100. £100 is on commission. 110, 120 is with me. 120, 130, 140 is still with me. 150, 160 still with me. This is getting a bit embarrassing now. 170, 180, 190. 190 looking for 200. Wow, one Norman Grant clearly is incredibly collectible. Fantastic. <laughs> £190 for all short. At £190. Wow. That is fantastic. <laughs> That's well ridiculous. Done. That's a really good result. Oh well my done. goodness. Everyone's a winner, look. And with that, Christina nets the biggest of all today's profits. Thank you for this. What an it amazing helped. We're bringing this to the next auction. We? <laughs> yeah, Maybe we should put it on the front of the car. <laughs> we should. Oh, what an amazing day. Fantastic. What an amazing day. I'm so proud of you. You as well. Brilliantly. Let's go. Wow. <laughs> Well done, both of you. Tim's on the back foot last time, but with that bravura performance. And after sale and fees, he's made £191.36 and marches on with a piggy full of £342.76p. Christina put her best foot forward again and after auction costs, racked up a profit of £255, claiming victory and entering the final road trip with £857.54p. and What a day. What Fantastic. a day! <laughs> Look at that little smile. Oh, no. He's All happy. that money to play with. Yeah. Mm. I, that makes me very nervous and it makes you very happy, I'm sure. I'm very happy. But you are snapping at my heels it's now. Nice heels they are. Well, thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, onwards and upwards. Yeah. Well, last leg. Last leg. Last leg. Oof. Hang on to the horseshoe.